Good evening. The Italian Chamber of Commerce of Ontario and our Executive Director, Corrado Paina, welcome you to the fourth class of our Tutti a Tavola series for the month of June, sponsored by The Loft at Longo's. This month, we focused on mouth-watering recipes for the grill to prepare either on the barbecue or indoors throughout the summer. This evening, we would like to conclude with a very unique dish that is truly a specialty of our chef. How many of you prepared the grilled dessert before? Well, tonight, you will find out how to do that thanks to our chef, Roberto, who likes to personalize his dishes for his guests so that they can have a whole different experience in the kitchen. The grilled torta dell'angelo features all the ingredients that contribute to a perfect summer dessert. Peaches, strawberries, and basil for dessert that Roberto called awesome, super easy, and crazy delicious. I'm sure you will love it. Once again, just a couple of reminders. Longos Summer Experience Magazine is still available until they last at Longos, so pick up a copy for more recipe ideas. Keep an eye at Longos website to register for the in-person classes at the loft that will resume in the fall. And don't forget to pair Chef Roberto's recipes with a selection of wines available at the Longo stores where staff will be ready to help select. Tonight, before we start preparing the torta, we would like to show you again some footage of the ICCO's Week of Italian Cuisine, which took place last year in November. Thanks to our collaboration with Longo's, we were able to bring to the loft three visiting chefs from Calabria, Italy, including a Michelin star chef who presented tasting events and prepared for us some incredible dishes. We really hope we can repeat this experience and that you will be able to join us in person. Also, I would like to announce that the ICCO's program for July includes three master classes on exploring varieties of extra virgin olive oils, bread making Italian style, an authentic Italian gelato on Tuesday, July 14th, 21st, and 28th. Although these master classes are conceived for the media influencers and industry people to promote authentic Italian products and ingredients, discuss certified products and their traceability, we would like to invite you all to follow us live. We will send out more details by, uh, in the next few days. But keep in mind, they will be at 11 a.m. in the morning. Since we will have a chef and professor doing the class, in English, of course, directly from Italy. Let's start with the video and let's go with Torta dell'Angelo right after. Before we conclude this evening, don't forget to give a round of virtual applause to Chef Roberto for an amazing series of Tutti a Tavola, incredible recipes and for giving out some of his secrets in the, in the kitchen. We at the Chamber hope you appreciated our effort to reformat our events and turn them on online classes to still reach you while respecting the social distancing due to the COVID-19 situation. We could not have done it without Longos and the Loft. Grazie a tutti. Let's go with the video. <laughs>
Okay. Welcome, everybody. Uh, so today, we're doing a little dessert on the grill. So, I don't know. If you guys have watched this class before, I like to do food that is very personal to me. And this is, uh, this is one of my go-tos. It's kind of strange. It, it came about because I was doing a class outdoors on a grill. We had nothing else. And I wanted to serve a dessert. So, I came up with this little weird grilled angel food cake kind of idea. And it is, it's since become one of my staples. I use it all the time. Um, I've had it on menus before. I do it in cooking classes because I want to share this beautiful dish with as many people as I possibly can. Most people, when they try it, I get emails, I get text messages years later thanking me for showing up. And the beauty of it is it's so simple. I almost feel guilty um, doing this dish because it's so simple. So... I'm going to get started with one of the elements, um, and that is a little strawberry conserva or compote. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a few strawberries. I think the recipe calls for a pound, and it's usually, I just did it as a pound. You know, that's what you buy them in. It leaves a few for you to snack on. And you can see they're a little bit beat up, these strawberries. They're a little bit bruised. Don't worry about it. If they're bruised, uh, that's good. It means that they're super ripe, they're nice and soft. That's what we want. Uh, you're better off to use strawberries that are a little, you don't want any mold or anything funky going on. But if they're a little bit bruised, that's okay. That's nice and sweet. That's nice and strawberry flavored. And we're kind of at the tail end of the Ontario strawberry season. So most of the ones, you know, that come out right now are nice and ripe. So don't be afraid if you see them and they're a little bit, you know, a little bit their absolute prime. It'll make for a good, good compote, I promise you. So all I'm doing is I'm just cutting them into quarters and taking off the taking off the, the stem first of all, and then just cut them into quarters. You can cut this as small as you want, but I like having it nice and chunky when I'm done. So done, you have, you know, a pot full of strawberries. Now a couple little elements to put in here just to build some flavors into it. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to zest a little lemon. On the recipe, I think I called for some lemon juice. You can add lemon juice if you want, or take a peeler, take a couple peels of lemon zest, and throw that right into the pot. We have to add a little bit of water. So this is just a touch of water, just to start the cooking process. If you add water, uh, the, the liquid from the strawberries don't come out very quickly so they'll just burn on the bottom with the water it creates a little bit of steam it'll start to break down the strawberries and a touch of sugar so the sugar i mean i'm just using a tiny bit because like i said these guys are nice and sweet uh they're nice and ripe so i don't need a ton of sugar if you're doing this and you have some strawberries that are kind of green or acrid then you might need to add a little bit more sugar but that's it. You can see in the bottom of the pot, there's really not that much water. Just a tiny bit of water in the bottom just to start the process. And then you just put it on top of a little flume. I'm going to use one out here. You, you can do this ahead of time. If you want, you can do this ahead of time and let it cool down. Doesn't really matter. Come on. And medium flame. And you just want to lightly, lightly, lightly cook the vegetable or the, the strawberries. You don't want it to boil and simmer. We're not making jam. We're just sort of thinning them up a bit and giving time for that flavor to come together. One last thing that I didn't put on the recipe that we are going to add is a little splash of balsamic vinegar. Balsamic vinegar works really, really, really well uh, with strawberries, but I'm just going to put in I don't know, that's like a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon, and a couple leaves of basil. So you don't have to do this. You do the basil. You don't have to do the balsamic vinegar. Um, I just like my desserts to be kind of on the savory side. I really like savory flavored desserts. So that's what it looks like when it's all together. The basil leaf in there. So basil leaf, a little bit of balsamic vinegar and onto the stove to cook. Now, it doesn't take a long time to cook. You're really not in there for two hours letting it simmer again. It's not jam, just a quick little compost. The other thing that we're going to cook are the peaches. So 
Grilled peaches are amazing. Grilled peaches are really amazing. So before we get into that, are there any questions that I need to know, that I need to answer before we start dealing with peaches? Um, hi, Chef Roberto. Um, one question, can you make the conserva with any other fruit other than strawberries? Oh yeah, yeah. So the, the conserva, the compote, it's just a, a fruit compote. So you can use, I mean, blueberries, you can use cherries, we're in cherry season. Um, you can use any fruit that you want. I'm doing strawberries because one, they cook really quick and I don't have a lot of time. Uh, and two, and like I said, it's the tail end of this is the time of year that I really like using strawberries near the end of the season. They just tend to be a little bit more ripe, a little more sweet. Um, any other questions? Uh, yes, just how long does uh, uh, conserva last once you cook it? Uh, once you cook it, if I have any left over, I usually put it into like little glass jars like you would do with jam and throw it into the fridge and have, you probably have three weeks before anything funky happens as long as you're using clean utensils. This is a very important part of uh, dealing with food. I see a lot of people saying, oh, my olives went bad after a week in the fridge. If Whenever you're taking anything out of a container, always make sure your spoons are clean. Quite often when we're cooking, you know, you use a spoon to taste something, to move something else, and you lick it, and you put it out, and then you need to fish an olive out, or you need to take some stuff out of a jar, use the same spoon. If you do that, if you introduce any bacteria into, into that container of the conserva or anything else, that's, that's when nastiness is going to happen. So always make sure your utensils are clean. You won't have any problems. More, More questions? questions? Uh, yes. How many cups of strawberries did you use tonight? Tonight, I did about a half of a pint. So that's, I'd say that's about one cup. One cup, two peels of lemon, one big leaf of basil, and a tablespoon of water, and a teaspoon of balsamic. And how long are you cooking the strawberries now? Well, like, it, you just have to watch them because it all depends how long. Uh, ripe they are because this is already simmering so all we want to do is have them break down we want them to get kind of soft uh, you don't want them to turn completely to mush you don't want them to turn into like i said a jam you still want some chunks you can cook it that far i should say i shouldn't say that you can cook it till it's completely mush and it's like like a jam but i like to keep little pieces of it so when it goes on the plate you can still see little pieces other questions okay cool so, we're going to go into peaches. So, I was really hoping we would have some early harvest peaches um, from Ontario. We're a little bit early. Missed it by, I don't know, about a week. Uh, but, at, uh, at the Longos, I saw these beautiful, beautiful white peaches. So, I like cooking with white peaches. They're nice and soft. And they're super, super sweet. So, do a little bit of white peaches. I also saw some nice, pretty little plums. Sorry, sorry, apricot. So we're going to grill off a little apricot. We're going to do two of them because they're small. And like I said, cherries are happening. So a few little cherries. Now, this dish, what I'm showing you is sort of the basic, you know, the basic uh, application of this, of this technique. But you can use whatever you want. You can, you can grill anything. You can grill a watermelon. You can grill mango. You can grill papaya. You can grill any fruit uh, that you really like. Three because, I don't know, they're kind of my favorite. So the peach, we're just going to cut it. Now, when you get peaches, if you're lucky, you get the freestone ones where the pit just comes out. When you get this, don't try and dig it out with your finger. I've seen get little shards of the peach pit stuck underneath their fingernail by trying to go in and pull the peach pit out. So just go in with the spoon and dig it out with the spoon. Um, if you have, like I said, the nice freestone ones, it comes out pretty easy. If not, you just have to wrestle it out with the spoon a little bit. Now, here, ideally what you want to do, uh, get all your fruit ready. Whatever fruit you're prepping, so I'm doing the same thing with the apricot, just going around, pulling out the pit. Uh, but once all your fruit is ready, what you want to do is get them cold. You want to get them really cold. So generally, just put these in the freezer for five minutes or so. And the reason is it just helps, um, it helps prevent them sticking to the grill. Now, 
I'm outside, it's hot, my freezer's all the way inside, so I'm going to do it kind of warm, which could be a lot of fun. We're going to see how this plays out. Um, <laughs> they might stick a little bit, but don't judge me on it, it's hot. So before we do anything else, we're just going to put, again, a little drizzle of balsamic vinegar onto the fruit. So, oops, just a little splash. I didn't mean to put that much on. It's not supposed to go all over my cutting board, but whatever. I'm done cutting. And we just kind of let it marinate. You just want the you just want the balsamic to be all over the exposed surfaces of the fruit and just let it macerate. Just just let it marinate a little bit in the balsamic vinegar. The fruit will start to absorb all the balsamic and like I said, if it's in the fridge, it'll uh it'll stay nice and cold. Now we're going to talk about the actual angel food cake. So any questions before we get into this? Because this is the this is the important part. Okay. So grilling angel food cake. Like I said, this just came about because yeah, I needed to do something outside on the grill. I started thinking about what you cook outside. Coming back to s'mores. I don't know why I kept coming back to s'mores. So I was grilling marshmallows. I was doing things like that, and I ended up settling on angel food cake. Now what I'm using here is the store-bought angel food cake. You can make your own angel food cake. I've done it before where I've made my own angel food cake and grilled it, but for some reason, the store-bought stuff works better. It's really strange. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm using a different kind of flour. I've, uh, I've tried to figure it out and I can't, so I don't bother trying to figure it out. I just go to the store and I buy a little bit of angel food cake and I grill it. Now, again, this is best if it's cold. And it's going to want to stick like crazy because it is quite warm. It's here. But I'm going to see what I can do. So we take our little piece of store-bought angel food cake. And we cut it into little wedges. So with angel food cake, I always find that a very light touch, and you just draw your knife through it, even if it takes you a couple times, get through it very light. If you try and cut it too quickly, like if you just jam your knife into it, it's it's going to want to cut. It's just going to mush. It's going to turn into a little pulpy mess. So very lightly cut some pieces. Now, if it starts to stick to your knife, you can see here, usually you get a little bit stuck to your knife. Just drag your knife on the edge of the cutting board and clean that off or else every time you pass your knife through the angel food cake, you'll get more and more and more stuck to it. So, those are the pieces of angel This is our fruit. And I'm gonna take a quick look at our strawberries because they should be pretty close. So you can see our strawberries have gotten, they're starting to break down, they're starting to get nice and soft. Oh yeah, that's it. That's all we did. Strawberries are already done. Liquidy here, but that's good because we're going to use the liquid to make the plate look really pretty when we go to plate the dessert. So I'm just going to set this off to the side and let it cool down. Ideally, you want to do this, you know, a little bit ahead of time so that you can really let it get nice and cold. One last thing before we start grilling. We're going to do a little mascarpone cream. So the mascarpone cream is sort of a go-to uh, sauce that I use quite a bit. Uh, I just like having mascarpone around in the in the house. So a little bit of my and I'm just going to do a tiny bit because I'm only plating a little bit. But you want this at room temperature, and we just put a little bit of mascarpone into any vessel that you have, and soften it up. Now again, this is room temperature, so it's already quite soft. And now we start seasoning it. So mascarpone, good mascarpone, is already sweet. So you don't need to add a ton of sugar. Um, I think on the recipe I gave you, a re I can't remember the ratio of, uh, of sugar that I gave you, but you want to put a touch in there just so that it does sweeten it up a bit, but again, I'm on the. I like savory desserts, so I don't mind my uh, my desserts being more on the savory. Side. 
super sweet. So we mix in our sugar, and now we can flavor this with whatever we want. So I'm going to put a drop of vanilla in, just because it's a dessert, and you know vanilla is always nice with the dessert. So just a little drop of vanilla, and maybe one more, like that. Now. <laughs> For those of you who watch my shows here, you know that I really like coffee. So I'm going to put coffee in here. I really, really like coffee. So I like coffee in my desserts. I like coffee in my entrees, coffee everywhere. So this is just a little shot of espresso that I made before. And I'm just going to put a little bit into my mascarpone. And... We mix it up and I made the bowl and don't try and put it in hot or you're gonna cook your your mascarpone we get a nice little cream that's coffee and vanilla like a nice latte ready for our garnish so there we go that's our mascarpone cream so this is a touch on the warm side if uh, if I could I would throw this into a fridge just for 10 minutes 15 minutes just so that it could you know, solidify a little bit, but it'll still be okay. All right. Now, we're going to get ready to start grilling. So, uh, like I said, everything ideally should be cold, but I'm going to try it hot. Any questions before I keep, before I start grilling? Uh, thank you, Chef. Yes. Uh, uh, so this is, ooh, which camera are we on? So, there you go. I'll come show you. Wow, wow, wow. So this is um, the Madagascar bourbon vanilla vanilla bean paste. So this one is a little bit thicker. It's not just the, the vanilla bean. And I kind of like playing with it because you can see it, uh, and you don't have to, like, mess around and wrestle with vanilla pods. Um, vanilla pods have a, the advantage of being a really clean vanilla flavor but in this application there's no way i could really extract the flavor from vanilla pods if i just put the raw seeds into the mascarpone you you just get a, this massive hit of vanilla and you wouldn't taste anything else so uh, using the paste or even extract you just want to make sure that it's good quality uh, vanilla extract there's a lot of very artificial products out there that don't really taste like vanilla so if you're going to buy it and uh, you want it in an application like this where you just easily incorporate it into your food, just, just buy the good vanilla extract and put a couple drops in. And could you, could you exchange that with balsamic glaze, for example? Um, you could. Uh, balsamic glaze and I don't have a very good relationship. But, uh, I don't like balsamic glaze. Balsamic glaze is just bad balsamic that is usually reduced with sugar to make it sweet and to thicken it. So balsamic glaze is not a good product. Uh, it doesn't taste like balsamic vinegar. It really doesn't. You're better off to buy a good balsamic, a good aged balsamic vinegar, something like, actually, can we change this camera? Something like this bad boy. Um, this is a good signature uh, this is the Longo signature uh, brand of balsamic vinegar, IGP. This will give you more flavor than the balsamic glaze will. And it's real. It's not, you know, artificial. That's what I would use instead of a glaze, for sure. And uh, if somebody's allergic to balsamic, could they use anything else, uh, even like on the fruits that you used? Yeah, yeah so, so a little bit of, like, whenever I'm dealing with fruit, I always try and make sure there's some sort of acid on there. So I would use a lemon juice if I do balsamic vinegar. The balsamic vinegar gives it, like, more richness, more depth, obviously. Um, but if I couldn't use balsamic, I would use just a little bit of lemon juice just to brighten it up. The, um, the fruit, fruit needs acid in order for it to be really appreciated by your taste buds. So whenever I cook, even if it's like a uh, macedonia, what do you call that? Uh, fruit salad, um, like a chopped up fruit salad. I always put a little bit of lemon juice in there just to brighten it up. It needs the acidity. It really, really does. So 
that's what I would substitute if I didn't, if I couldn't use Balsamic. But that would make me cry not being able to use Balsamic. And could you just briefly repeat how you made your mascarpone with, like, how much did you use and what did you put in it? Okay, so I put, let's say, two, say, two tablespoons of mascarpone. I put about a, I'd say a half a, a half a shot of espresso cold, um, a teaspoon of sugar, and I don't know, like two. I would say maybe two mill two milliliters of the vanilla paste. If you're using vanilla extract, I'd use a little bit less. I'd use about two milliliter, like a couple drops of uh, vanilla extract. And that's it. As long as your mascarpone is at room temperature, it's really easy to work. The problem is, if you're doing this, I have to use this mascarpone by tomorrow now because it's been up to room temperature. I'm going to put it back in the fridge overnight, but if I don't use it tomorrow, it's going to be garbage. So I'm making tiramisu tomorrow. Okay, so ingredients are ready. It's time to start grilling. So my grill, I have it on two different heat. So on the left side, on the camera, it's the furthest side. So this side way over here is really hot. This side is really low because I'm cooking the ingredients at two different temperatures. So I'm going to start with our peach. And again, way better if it's cold. We put that on the hot side. When you put it onto the grill, I'm placing it very gently. You don't want to slap it on there. You don't want to like push it into the grill. The harder you push, the more likely it is to stick. So just putting our apricots down and our cherries. Now the cherries don't really get grilled. They just sort of get blistered. So we put that, wow, that's hot, onto the hot side. And we just give them a couple of minutes. Now we want to give the fruit a bit of a head start because the actual angel food cake cooks in seconds. So we just have to pay attention here. And the cherries won't stick because they have a nice thick skin on the outside. So you can, you know, immediately start moving them around. All we want to do, like I said, is get them blister. We don't want them. You won't get grill marks on it. You'll just get a little bit of blistering. The fruit will start to release itself from the grill when it's cooked. Okay. If you get in and you go to remove it, and it's sticking like crazy, that means it's not ready to, to get moved yet. So just sit back, relax, give it another minute, and it'll release when it's ready to release, when it's actually cooked. Now the peaches, I'm giving it a little because I know they're going to need a little longer. And like I said, I'm just going to go under, and if it sticks, then I leave it alone. So I pick it up this way, and I rotate it, and I'm moving it to a different part of the grill. So I'm not going to pick it up. I'm not going to put it back in the exact same spot. If, if I take a piece of anything off from one spot and I rotate it and I put it down, the grill where the, the fruit is in top the, the actual bars of the grill will be colder. So you won't get that really nice hash mark, those really nice you know, little X marks that you want on your, on your product. So always move it to a new spot on the grill so that you get really nice, wow, really nice hash marks. So my grill is hot, but when I say hot, I mean it's, I mean it's about halfway up. If you guys have watched this, you know that I don't, I don't condone turning your grill up on full and cooking everything on full. Uh, it, barbecues, most barbecues are way too hot. They're, they're just way too hot especially when you're doing something delicate like this. So it's hot. Like I can't hold my hand here for too long, um, but it's not full. Uh, the grills are hot. That's the important part. Fairly blistered. Our apricots should be okay. So I'm just going to flip them over. Now, if you do um, get stuck out here, you know, doing your prep outside, and you can't get your, your fruit to be nice and cold, you can always just give it a little dab of oil. Like, um, you can even spray it with, uh, you know, the canned spray oils, um, 
Longos has an awesome uh, canola oil in the can uh, that works really well. And so you can just give it a quick spray of oil just to help them, you know, come off the grill nicely. But it's always fun to try without the oil. So our peach comes off. Whoa, that's hot. And we flip it over now. So you can see it's grill marks on it. Um, this is the part where we're actually going to cook the peach. We don't want it completely mushy, but we want it kind of soft. So just give it a couple of minutes. It really doesn't take that long. Our apricots are nice. One more turn and they're done. Whew. And now we have about two or three minutes before the peaches are done. So some time for some questions so I can stall while the peaches cook. Um, so if you don't have a barbecue, could you also do this in the oven or any other way? Yeah, there's a couple ways. Um, for the fruit, a grill pan always works really well. Like we did last week with the tuna inside, uh, like a cast iron pan with the grills in it. It works really well. With the angel food cake, it works exceptionally well. Uh, if you don't have that, uh, you can always broil it. So if you cook, cut the, the piece of angel food cake and you just put it onto a baking tray and put it under the broiler in the oven, it'll it'll toast up. And that's all we're really doing here. We're not cooking the angel food cake. We're just toasting it. So, so you get that, you know, marshmallows over the open fire kind of flavor going on. Whew. Anything else? Um, coming back to the mascarpone cream, could you use liquor when you make that cream? Sorry. I oh. When you make the mascarpone cream, could you use liquor? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, you could use alcohol as much as you want, actually. Um, yeah, I actually suggest that you use alcohol. Uh, but I've done it with a model before. I've done it with even wine, um, with like a, a poached pear. I've done like a wine mascarpone. The mascarpone just adds richness and it adds sort of, it's the base base uh, material and then you flavor it with, yeah, whatever the heck you want. So, our cherries are coming out. I gotta clean my Nothing else from uh, questions? Well, wow. okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna give my cutting board a little wipe because yeah, I got balsamic all over the place. And now, like I said, everything is done. Now it's just plating. So I'm gonna slowly start taking all of my, all of my fruit off of the cutting board. Our cherries come off because they're looking pretty nice. And again, they're not really grilled. Like you can't make out the grill marks on it, but you can see that it's kind of blistered. Oops, oh there. You can see that it's kind of blistered. And that's what we want. Uh, it's just like, you know, like uh, grilling a pepper. You're just getting some flavor of burnt into it. We take our apricots. Oh, come on, don't be like that. Take our apricots off. And again, feel free to play with this. Use whatever fruit is in season, whatever fruit looks the best, um, and have some fun. Our peaches come off. And our strawberries are coolish. So you'll see as it starts to cool down, it'll thicken up just like, you know, when you make the jam. Um, it could be a bit cooler, but we're going to play with it anyway. So now comes the plating. Now, ideally, I, I let these cool down for a couple of minutes usually before I start plating. Uh, it just gives it time for all the fruit to sort of firm up a little bit. Oh, wait, I forgot the angel food cake. Oh, man. <laughs> so on the low side... On the temperature that is low on the barbecue, we're going to grill our angel food cake. Now, like I said, it's best if your if your angel food cake is cold, but we're gonna try it with it being nice and hot. So, uh, uh, uh. that's this side of the grill, 
and we put the angel food cake on, but once you start cooking, be ready because it cooks very, very, very quick. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You can do it over a higher heat, and it really does take five seconds. Um, I'm doing it, like I said, over a little bit lower heat because I want to toast the outside of the angel food cake. If you put it over high heat, if I did it over on this side, yeah, I would have already flipped it two times by now. But this is a nice lowish heat. So I'm just going to basically toast our angel food cake. So I'm going to turn that up a bit because it's a touch cold. I'm still about halfway on the, on the barbecue. So not super hot, not smoking hot. And we just give it a second. And we rotate it. And we rotate it. And we rotate. So whenever, whenever you're grilling, basically you always want to pick up your product and rotate it 60 degrees. You don't have to do it that way, but that's how you get those nice little hash marks. Like when you, you know, when you get a piece of meat and you have all those little nice even on your meat, that just comes from picking it up and doing the rotating. So if you don't do that, it's not going to kill it. It's not going to ruin it. It's not going to be the end of the world. But, you know, you want it to make it look as much as the stuff that you get in the fancy restaurant. So... It's all about just rotating. Once we've done the rotation, we flip it over to the other side. So we have some nice going on. The outside of this is toasted. It's just like toasting a piece of bread. And this is where you'll see the difference between the store-bought angel food cake and homemade stuff. When I do it and I use the homemade angel food cake, it just it falls apart. It doesn't toast as well. So, like I said, I don't bother. I just buy a good angel food cake and it already smells like marshmallows right now it smells awesome so a little grill there yeah heat is good any questions while we wait for another 40, 40 seconds? seconds uh yes what if your mascarpone cream comes out too liquidy what can you do uh if it's a little bit too wet uh, put it back in the fridge as it cools the fat will solidify and it'll turn it'll turn solid again. From the room temperature, if you put it back into the fridge, it'll turn to the consistency of butter. So back in the fridge, not for too long. And that's it. So I'm now I'm just doing the back sides of the angel food cake. So I like to do all three sides so you get a lot of that nice toasty flavor. And very quick. The back side always goes quicker. Just give it a quick toast and we should be good to go. Now, this is something that quite often, I mean, I do individual plated little desserts with this, but you can absolutely do this family style. I've done it before where I've taken all the pieces apart like this, toasted it, and then sort of put it back together into the little donut but mold comes in. Uh, and then fill the inside with a, a, a fruit compost, put all the sauces, all the, you know, grilled fruit all the way around it. It ends up looking pretty cool. It's a little bit more work because you have to take it all apart, toast it, and then put it all together again. But it looks great in the end. So, oops, now we're done. Now we're our ingredients. The important thing here is that once it comes off the grill, you really do have to serve it fairly quickly. Uh, as it sits here, especially because we're outside and it's kind of, you know, warm and humid, this will get soft. So right now, it's it's got a nice crunch to it. It's, seriously, it's like a piece of toasted bread. So if you leave it out here too long, it'll just start to get, it'll absorb the humidity, and it'll just get soggy and gross and not very appealing. So we have our mascarpone cream here. I'm just going to take a little spoon, and I'm just gonna put a little dab on the plate. Now you can play with this, you can wipe, you can take a paintbrush and paint it across the plate, but I like keeping this dish kind of, you know, very rustic looking. So we put a little piece of our grilled angel food cake kind of sitting in there, holds it all together. We take our peaches, and I'm just gonna cut 
the small little wedges out of it. You can put the whole peach on if you want, but because this is, uh, it's quite large. So if it's a nice small peach, then absolutely I would, I would put the whole peach on, but it's a very big peach. So I'm going to put our apricot here. Going to take a couple of our dark berries. And again, if you get really big blueberries, they work really well too. Chard blueberry is quite 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 delicious and now we have our strawberry compote is our last element so as you can see super simple super easy to plate technically nothing difficult but now we're just going to fish out a couple of these strawberries and i generally don't put it on top of okay any liquid that goes on here will again make it really it'll just make it soggy and I don't want the sogginess. So I'm going to take this little piece of lemon zest and put that on there too because it looks pretty and it tastes nice. And then we take the little sauce that we have and we just drizzle a bit of it around the plate. It's kind of nice and dark red because of the balsamic vinegar. That's the color. And that's our dish. Like it's so simple. It's so simple it's criminal. Uh, but it tastes absolutely awesome. So again, tart it up play with it use different fruits um grill it longer grill it shorter the the actual angel food cake just play with the dish play with the fruit and you'll see how 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 awesome this dish is now yeah it took me half an hour to do it because i'm talking the whole time but if you really concentrate this takes 15 minutes it takes 15 minutes to cook it takes longer for your barbecue to warm up than it does to actually cook uh this dish all right. Tidying up, are there any questions? Uh, yes. So if you are making your own angel food cake, would it barbecue better if you waited a couple of days before using it? I've tried, and I've tried drying it out, like getting making my own angel food cake, and then like leaving it out for a couple of days uh, to try and dry it out. And I don't know, it just, it sticks more. It sticks more. It's, about the humidity in the actual cake i i bake but i'm not a baker i'm not a pastry chef um so i'm sure a, a more knowledgeable pastry chef would have a better idea but honestly because this is you know for me at home and for my my friends who usually come over i don't i don't want to stress so much i want to spend more time hanging out talking to them as opposed to sweating in the kitchen making angel food cake wondering if it's actually going to grill i know this works i've done this honestly times i know it works so i'm just going to stick with it feel free if you guys want to try it with fresh angel food cake please do it and let me know how it works um i i i like i said i've wrestled with it but if someone can figure out how to do it let me know get on instagram at roberto fracchioni direct message me and let me know what you did to make it work i really want to know um, could you substitute the angel cake with uh, another type of cake, like pound cake, or for example, somebody suge suggested pandoro or panettone? Yeah. yeah, so I've done it with pound cake before. Um, I always do this with, uh, with panettone. Um, I don't know, like a lot of people, Christmas time, you end up with more panettone than you could ever possibly eat. Uh, so to switch it up a little bit, I always trudge out here in the wintertime. Uh, turn on the barbecue and I grill it up and it's it's awesome. It has a better flavor than just doing it in the toaster. Quite often I'll toast uh, panna, but when you do it on the grill, the flavor just completely changes. And that's why this angel food cake works. I've tried doing angel food cake and pound cake in a toaster and yeah, it'll get brown, it works, but it's not the same. It's really not the same. It's the, the browning, the dark, dark brown that you get from a grill that you can't get in a toaster. Yeah, absolutely. You can substitute pound cake. You can substitute uh, panettone. It all works. It all works. Can you give us some background on this recipe? How did you come across this recipe? <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it was it was. Uh, I had a friend who had a cooking studio um, outside. Uh, well, she had an indoor studio. I helped her design the outdoor studio, uh, which was in the middle of a field, uh, and the only cooking source was this giant stone grill uh that i took my dad out of retirement to build for her and so 
classes there. I think I did the first class there. And yeah, and it's, you know, we did, we did, we did successive courses. And when it came to desserts, I didn't want to do anything cold. I wanted to do something with the grill because, you know, it was, it was kind of cool. So I just, I just started thinking. Another cool thing you can do with this dish is you can turn this into a s'mores dessert really easy. If you take the grilled angel food cake and then you make a quick chocolate ganache, like you melt some, some chocolate, a little touch of cream, uh, use that as the sauce on the bottom, take some graham crumbs, some graham crackers, uh, crumble them up and toss them in a pan so that they're toasted or you can put them into the oven and toast them in the oven and you do the angel food cake with it. It tastes exactly like a s'more. An angel food cake and a marshmallow are pretty much the same. Like they, the flavor profile, everything is the same. So you could have done this, like I said, in a s'more, s'more sort of flavor. Um, it all different ways, but it's just uh, the grilled angel food cake. Honestly, try it. It's it's pretty awesome flavor. And what should you, you use? Really Sorry. Uh, what would you use instead of a mascarpone cream? Is there anything else that you could use? Um, yeah, I mean, I like, I, I use the mascarpone cream just to add some richness to the dish, right? Because it's, you know, it's cheese. There's a little bit of milk fat in there. Um, you could do, a lot of people will substitute Philadelphia cream cheese for mascarpone. Mascarpone is a little bit sweeter. Texture, density is a little bit, a little bit different. But yeah, you can always substitute a Philadelphia cream cheese and again, just flavor it however you want. I mean, it's used in cheesecakes. It's used in a lot of desserts, uh, Philadelphia. So it's, it's a good substitution. But mascarpone has a, has a flavor that, uh, so you should get used to it. Because like I said, it's a good excuse to have it in your house. And could you use gelato instead? You could. The problem with gelato is that like I said, this has to be served like right now. Like it's been on the plate for six minutes and it's already starting to get soft. Like it's already, it doesn't have the hard crust on the outside. If you look at it, like it's, yeah, it's already starting to get soggy and it's starting to get. So if you're doing gelato, this goes on the plate. Ideally, you want it to go on the plate and you want to put it in front of somebody within, I don't know, within two minutes. If you put ice cream on here, you have the hot angel food cake and the cold gelato. And the gelato melts really quickly. And then the angel food cake acts like a sponge and just sucks up all It tastes great, but you kind of miss the point on that crispy texture of the uh, angel food cake. So if you're not so worried about that, or you get a little, you know, a little side cup, and you serve the gelato off to the side in a little, like an egg cup or a little shot glass or however big a piece of gelato you want. Or you do a big bowl of gelato, you do the angel food cake, but in smaller pieces, and you the food cake is garnished on top of the gelato. That's what I would do so that there's minimal contact with the ice cream and it won't get all soggy and you still get the nice crispy little bit. Um, so in the recipe, it actually says to use 35% cream, but you did not use any tonight. Could you just explain why? Um, because in the recipe, there's no, yeah, I forgot to mention that. It's a great, I never caught that. That's genius. Um, in the, you need a little bit of liquid just to thin out uh, the mascarpone a little bit. So generally you use cream uh, because it's dairy and it works. But because I put the coffee into the mascarpone, that's the liquid element. So I think it's a tablespoon of, of uh, 35% that was on the recipe. So I used half of that, uh, more or less, in uh, coffee. So it thins it out enough, which makes it liquid enough. So yeah, if you're not going to add the coffee, then you use 35% cream. If you're gonna use alcohol, then you don't use the 35% cream. Uh, as long as you're putting a liquid in there just to loosen it up, you're, you'll be okay. All right. Did you get any inspiration from the uh, summer magazines at Longos for your recipes that you created? Oh, I, always, I always do. Um, I don't know if you guys know about this. I hope you guys can see this. Um, there's a lot of great publications. And I know a lot of people just go right to, you know, the internet. I still do, too. I go to the internet to look for inspiration for dishes. But there's something about having, you know, a tactile 
magazine or a book. I still have hundreds and hundreds of cookbooks. This is a little a little magazine that's produced um, by Longos, and it's a wonderful, wonderful little magazine for ideas in the summertime. We're all stuck at home now. I've been cooking breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and two snacks a day for four months. Uh, and yeah, I run out of ideas too. And I'm a professional at writing recipes and menus. So yeah, I, I go to the Longos book whenever I see it, whenever I think about it, I need something to grill and I'll go in there and say, Hey, grilled corn. And then I haven't done grilled corn in a long time. Yeah. It's a good resource. If you're out at Longos, have one, keep it with you. It's, it's got a lot of great ideas in there. Any other questions? How's my time? Wow. I'm, I'm actually, actually done, done on, on time. time. I don't think that's ever happened. Told you it was easy. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you try this recipe. I really, really, really drew, do out of all the ones that I did. Uh, this is one I want you to try because it is crazy simple, crazy delicious. And uh, let me know how it works out. Thank you so much, Roberto. I think the Torta del Angelo was a great way to finish the series. Um, thank you very much, all of you, for following us. We hope you will join us again for the month of July. We hope you enjoyed the classes for the month of uh, June. Um, the Italian Chamber of Commerce of Ontario would like to wish you a happy Canada Day. Maybe we will celebrate it with Torta del Angelo. Thank you so much, Roberto, for uh, all your uh, amazing recipes. Thank you, Astrid, Isabella, and everybody at the chamber who made this possible. Uh, arrivederci. Hope you will join us uh, soon again. And thank you very much to all of you. Grazie mille.